This is absolutely crazy. I'm going to warn you right now. The description's a little long, okay? The presentation's key, all right? There's no slights involved. Anybody in the world can do this. I don't care if you're nine, if you're 19, if you've never done any card tricks, this is the perfect trick for you and particularly for right, what's going on right now in the world with the virus, all right? Imagine this. You call your friend. You say, hey, I just left something for you in your mailbox, okay? I just left something for you in your mailbox. Go grab it. But do not open the envelope until you call me back. How dramatic. How crazy. It is. This is the perfect self-isolating. Everyone's self-isolating. This is the perfect card trick for this era. You're going to love it. All right? They take the package. Okay? They take the package. They then um, give you a call back on your phone. All right? And you say, here's what I want you to do. I want you to tear open the package. They tear open the package. They find inside a pack of cards in a card case. All right? You have them take out, you direct them, you say, you direct them to take out the cards. They give the cards a mix-up, and then you do an impossible three-phase mentalism effect, okay? Three phases, it's crazy. They basically put any card they want in their back pocket. They don't even look at it, and in a moment later, you tell them exactly what card is in their back pocket. I have freaked out people with this, friends and family, uh, as well as I uh, sent it to people to seal a business deal if I'm working with a client and they want me to do four trade shows and I do a presentation live and they say we'll get back to me next week. And the next day, uh, the, by courier, the deck of cards is emailed to them, or not emailed, if you can email a deck of cards, please get back to me. Let me know how it's done. Um, then I do this crazy card trick and I always land the deal. It's a freak. I've had people say at the very end, they literally, and on the phone, I'll give you the full presentation in a second, but they have this sense that maybe I'm somehow watching them from 20 miles away with a hidden camera, all right? And I've done this on radio shows for those of you. So this is the perfect trick for these self-isolating times. You don't have to be there. They do everything and you astound them, okay? And they can do it in front of their friends and family, break up another Friday night at home, et cetera, et cetera. So this is awesome. I'm gonna show you uh, exactly how to do this card trick. I guarantee you're gonna love it. On this video, I'm also gonna announce the uh, winners of last week's When Creators Collide Live. Uh, 12 of you won the download. I'm gonna announce the winners on this video. Uh, and I'm gonna ask a question of the week. Why don't we jump into the question of the week right now before we get into this amazing self-isolating card trick. Question of the week is this. We're all at home these days. We're self-isolating. What advice do you have? If you could give someone one piece of advice about staying home and staying sane, how to stay healthy, and in particular, how to stay sane, staying at home more than people ever have before when you're at home. If you have any good advice, leave a comment down below. It can be a short comment. It can be a long one. Leave a comment. Tell us. Give us some advice about staying sane, uh, and you'll have a chance to win Pandora's Box. Now, Pandora's Box... Uh, is this very cool gimmick you can use with any card case in the world, pretty much any card case in the world, and you can turn the gimmick into a literal magic machine where things vanish, things appear, and there's an audio component that's very deceptive as well. This is Pandora's box, as always. You can check it out at sankeymagic.com. Uh, check out the Pandora's box preview and leave a comment down below. Tell me about some advice about these things sane when stuck at home for a trillion hours in a row. Give us some advice and you have a chance to automatically win the contest. Okay, let's jump inside this. So, think about this just for a second. Okay, I'll tell you right now, for those of you who think that, oh, is it in size Stebbins or is there some special order? I could give this deck, okay, to the world's number one authority in card magic and special orders or give it to a scientist to study. There is no actual discernible order. There's no pattern. There is no pattern to these cards anybody would ever, ever figure out, even the biggest computer in the world. Is there a pattern? There's no pattern. So I want you to know it's not as simple as a pattern deck. Right? And yet still, you're in complete control and you'll know exactly which cards they freely choose, even though you're a thousand miles away. Okay, so keep in mind how dramatic that is. So here is the way I do this trick. Let me reveal the method to you right now. I am, in fact, it's one of the very few tricks I know it's a, that uses a deck of cards. How many card tricks do you know, though, that use two decks? You're using two decks of cards. Now, if that's piqued your curiosity, and I hope it has, this is my job as a teacher of magic and instructor to pique your curiosity. So you're going to use two decks of cards for this. Now... These two decks are in the exact same order. These cards 
are in the same order as these cards. And all I did was grab one deck, give it a shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. That's my action for shuffling. One deck shuffled. Then I took the cards. I fan, uh, sort of spread them out on that table here. Uh, let me see if I can get that in the shot. So I'm sure you know what it looks like when cards are spread out on the table. Spread them out on the table. Then I went through the second deck here and one by one arranged it so it's in the exact same order as this deck. So you've got two decks in the exact same order. Okay. One of the decks you put in a card case. Okay. Seal it up. Put it in an envelope. Okay, pad an envelope, whatever, so it's all sealed up. You can put a piece of tape on if you want. And then when you're ready to freak out a friend just down the street or across the hall in your condominium or whatever, uh, leave it in their mailbox, or you could knock on the door, or you could say, even phone them, in 10 minutes, I'm going to knock on your door. Don't open the door. It's self-isolating days. But I'm going to leave something in a bag just hanging off the doorknob, whatever. As soon as I knock, give me 10 seconds to run down the hall. I don't want to get near you. And then open the door and take it out. You don't even tell them what you're going to do. I'm going to show you something this, this morning. Let's do something together. I'm going to try to see if I can show you something that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. Dramatic, drama. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so you've sent this to your friend. Okay, when you call your friend, you need to have this other deck all set up there. Now, there's something, uh, yeah, let's get, there's, there's one key principle here we'll get to. So how do you do this? So I've got my deck out of the case ready. I'm on my phone, all right? I'm going to turn my cards. I'm going to turn them face up and leave them face up right there. I'm on my phone, and this is what I say, okay. I want you to use both hands to open the envelope and remove what's inside. So they use both hands, they tear open the envelope, they remove the card. Okay. Now, for the last time, I want you to move, remove, uh, remove the cards from the card case again using both hands. So you've set both hands. They take out the cards, they remove them, they put them on the table. Okay. You say, that's it. From now on, I want you to only do everything with one hand. Okay, now this is all about free choice. So I want you to choose. You can use your left hand or your right hand. I think your right hand is going to work better for you, but left hand or right hand. So let's say they make a choice and they decide they're going to use them. You don't tell me. I don't want you to tell me which hand you're using, but only the other hand for now, put it behind your back. All right. Now using the one hand you decide, I want you, this is what you're saying, and I want you to lift off about half the cards. Lift them off and put them off to the right of the deck. You have to be very careful here. To the right. Now I want you to pick up all the remaining cards from the bottom of the pack and put them on top. That way you've cut the pack. Now, you might have thought I was controlling you too much by saying cut them about in the middle of the cards. So instead, lift off as many cards as you want. You can lift off five, you can lift off 50. With the one hand, lift them off. And I apologize, you should have told them the whole time the deck should be face down. I want you to see the cards as little as possible because I don't want you to muddy your mind with thoughts. I'm going to try to read your mind from the distance just over the phone. So they lift off some cards. And again, you say, if once you put them off to the right, now I want you to complete the cut. These are key lines. Complete the cut. Lift all the cards from the table and put them over here. Now, I want you to cut the cards uh, one more time just to be so faithful. Or do you want to? You can ask them, do you want to cut the cards again? I want to make sure that you've really, you know, that you've cut the cards. There's no way I can know the order. Now, if you're an experienced magician, you now know what we're heading into because you do know the order. I have to take a minute to explain it to you guys. Very important. This, if you think of it as a loop, okay, where we've got in this game uh, three of diamonds, ten of spades, four of spades, nine of spades. You know what the card above this card is? In the loop, it's the bottom card. It's the three of hearts. Because when I cut the pack here, the three of hearts ends up on top. It goes three, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, jack, four, eight, and if you think of it as a loop, no matter where you cut the cards, as long as you only cut them into two packets and complete the cut, the circle, the order of the cards never changes. You don't know which card's on top. You don't know what card's on bottom. But at no place, as long as you're only cutting it into two packets, you never break the circle of the order. So this is weird. It's hard to imagine, but the cards are in the same order every time. I don't know the top card. I don't know the bottom card, okay? But I know the order of the cards because it's never broken. It's a circle. There's no actual mixing happening. You're just cutting. But to most people, when they cut the cards and you say there's no way I can know the order, they know that's true, especially if they've cut the cards randomly a few times. So this is the key to this principle. They're cutting the cards. They're cutting the cards. Now, 
we come back to this. They're using one hand. Okay, maybe the other hand's holding the phone, I guess you could do that too, unless they got you on speakerphone, which I suggest you do. Now, having done that, you then say this. Okay, have you, are you satisfied? Have you cut the cards enough? They say yes. You say, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take whatever card is now on top of the deck. Do not look at it. I want you to take it and sit on it. Slip it under your butt. They do. They slip it under the butt like that. You then say, I want you to take the next card and I want you to deal it face down. Again, don't peek at it. To the right. And they deal it to their right. Maybe they put it here. Maybe they put it here. Whatever. The, to the right. Take the last card and put it to your left. Which they've done. All right? They've done. So, first one went to the right. Sorry. First one went to the pocket. Second one went here. And the third one hit it there. Now, they have no idea which cards they are. And nor do you. It's a perfect mystery. Then you say, look, I'm going to try to get a sense of one of the cards from, you know, down the hall here or across the city here or 500 miles away. What a great thing to mail to your friend. A wonderful experience. I'm going to try to get a sense of one of the cards. But to show you how difficult this can be, I want you to try to do it from just one foot away. Stare at that left card, that front one you put to the left. I want you to stare at that, okay? I want you to concentrate. Do you have a sense? What do you think? Is it red or black? What do you think? And they say black. They're guessing. Okay, you say black. Okay. Okay, and do you think it's a club or spade? And they say club. And you say, well, what do you think the card is? And they say three of clubs. You say, go ahead, turn it over. Using just the one hand, which they do. In this case, it's an ace of hearts. And I say, how'd you do? How'd you do? Well, what's the card? And they say, ace of hearts. And you say, well, you didn't get very close. Did you? So I think you'd agree that if I could read your mind and you move on, if I could read your mind from 100 miles away, it'd be pretty impressive, right? Okay, here we go. So let's try this. What I want you to do now. Now notice as a sideline I want you guys to know right now. I now know the card on the right and the card in their pocket, even though they don't know. Because in my deck, as soon as they say Ace of Hearts, okay? I mean, here's my Jack of Diamonds. But as soon as they say Ace of Hearts, I grab my deck and I go through to my Ace of Hearts. Totally random. And I know two things, okay? I know that the card directly above the ace is going to be the Jack of Diamonds. And I know the one directly above the Jack of Diamonds in their back pocket is the Three of Spades. So I use this as a test. They think of theatrically just building the impossibility of what I'm about to do. They don't realize they just gave me all the information I need to nail the last two cards from 100 miles away. So I now know this is the Jack. And I now know, as we said, that uh, this the last one in the pocket is the three of spades. I know those last two cards. So you're in a crazy, crazy position at this point. Right? Now, how do you reveal them? What's the scripting? This is key. This freaks people out, this next part. Before I tell you, though, let's announce the winners of the When Creators Collide Live. You 12 won the download. Um, if you, I say your name now. Send an email to my team at contact at sankeymagic.com and tell them your YouTube name, your real name, and uh, your email address, they'll have that because this is a download, so they're not going to mail you anything, all right? But they are going to send you both the brand new download with Richard Sanders, When Creators Collide Live, plus a PDF of the original book from a quadrillion years ago. These tricks are great. Response to this project has been wonderful, okay? So here are the winners right now. Tony Antoniadis. I think it's Greek, maybe? Antoniadis. Tony and you have Tony in your middle name, too. That's great. Tony, Tony. Tony and Tony Andes. Joe Dominic. Hector Gonzalez. Brandon Braithwaite. Luke Malloy. Ryan Atiatat. Double Y in the middle. Wow, that's rare. Ryan Atiatat. Baylor Getz. Patrick Callahan. Patrick, uh, sorry, Patrick Callahan. Mark Dettilio. Richard Greenhorn. Mike Sears. And finally, Robert Shaw Four. Not the first, not the second. Not the third, not the fifth, the fourth. Robert Shaw, fourth. You guys all won, okay? So contact my team. Uh, they'll have your email. They'll fi fire back your prize, okay? And thank you, everybody, for joining as always. Okay, here we are. They just tried to get a sense of the card. They were totally off. Or maybe they were kind of close. Maybe they got the color right, okay? But just, So you say, fine. You say, let's try it again. I'm going to try to get a sense of it, but give me some help here. I want you to turn over the card you dealt after all the cutting, turn over whichever card you dealt to the right. You turn it over. I want you to stare at that card. And this is where you bring it from abstract to real time. Stare at that card. 
while you're staring at it, I'm going to try to look at the card through your eyes. Now, make sure your windows are shut, your doors are locked, right? Which I love. I've done this for friends, and they actually said that what I said, make sure your windows are closed, your doors are locked. They admitted that they sort of glanced around very quickly in case the curtain was open, because they know there's no goddamn way Jay is going to be able to get a sense of these cards after they've mixed them up. There's no way. He can't know. Okay? So you're here. And you say, look at the card. Get a sense of a card. And this is where you play it out like crazy. You go, I don't think it's, is it? I, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I think it's red, though. I think it's red. Actually, tell me that much. And they go, yes, it is red. And they think 50-50. You go, okay, don't, let me see. I think it's a heart. No, no, it's probably, a, is it a diamond? I'm getting a sense it's a diamond. And this is where you get people going like, they start swearing, no way. Come on. They, they, they figure, there's just no, what are you doing, man? And you go, diamond, it's a diamond. And I'm seeing a face card. I think it's a, is it a, is it a king? Now I've done this. Sometimes I nail it. Is it the Jack of Diamonds? And they go, oh my God, it is. Okay. And again, they're staring at it. You're trying to see it through their eyes. Okay. Um, Jack of Diamonds. Other times I'll say, is it, uh, is it the king, the king of diamonds? And they go, no, it's the Jack. So you get close. Now that can be very credible. People believe, oh my God, how'd he get so close? Was it fluke? Was it not fluke? If I didn't have a third card remaining, I wouldn't, wouldn't end there. It's too soft, right? But if I got a third one, what a way to build. So you can nail it or get close or whatever. Instead of the Jack of Diamonds, I could say, it's, is it the Jack of Hearts? Something close. The Queen of Diamonds, something close. Now the ending. Because this one they were looking at, this one they knew, this one you were suggesting, I'm going to read your mind. And somehow, somehow, through the phone, what's going on? Through the phone? But say, the card in your pocket or the card you're sitting on. And I love this idea of something so close to them. It's literally against their butt and they have no idea what it is. But you're going to go there with your mind near their butt. Okay, so it's great. The last card, last card, I don't want you to look at it yet. Okay, I'm going to try to do this one cold. Instead of trying to read your mind, I'm going to just try to get a sense of what that last card might be. And this is where you play it up. Yeah. Is it black? It's black. I'm going to fully go in. I think it's a spade. I think it's, the, I think it's a spade. One of 52 cards. I've narrowed it down. I think it's a spade. I think it's a low spade. I think it might be, I think, I think it's the three of spades. I don't know why. I don't, and I love doing that with men. I don't know why. I don't know why. Rather than this guy, with the re, I've got all the answers. No, I don't know why. I don't know why. But I think the card on your hand is maybe the three of spades. And if you can set up a recorder, and listen, when they pull out from under their own butt, after mixing up these cards, the three of spades. Oh, it's good. It is the perfect trick for these self-isolating times. I hope you really like it. Leave a comment down below. I want you to get your chance to win the Pandora's box. Leave a comment. Give me some advice. What's some advice? Maybe something you haven't heard a lot of people say. How to stay sane when we're all isolating, when we're all isolating each other so much from each other. We're all, it, all our habits are gone. All our usual, you know, our patterns, everything's all gone right now. What are we doing? So give me some advice down below. Automatically get a chance to winter, to winter. Uh, you get a chance to, to season, not summer. You get a chance to win uh, one of the Pandora's box. Last two questions, uh, last two things I want to suggest, please. If you've enjoyed this video, if you've enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it. I'm trying to get to 400,000. When I get to 400,000, I'm going to do a week-long celebration, a different tutorial every day of the week for seven days. It's going to be crazy awesome, giving away prizes every day. Help me get there. Subscribe to the channel. Boom, right there. Subscribe to this channel, please. And also, follow me on Instagram. I do a whole bunch of cool things on Instagram as well. So follow, I don't even know if I have a link for Instagram, but down there maybe, here or here. Might be a might be a download video, I'm not sure, but I'll leave the link down there too as well for Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. I'll leave lots of cool magic stuff there, uh, tips and ideas. And, and also please subscribe to the channel today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and don't get too caught up in your head, huh? I mean, let, let's look out for each other. Let's check in with each other, look out for each other in these challenging times. Bye.